Welcome back on the AM show. We started the conversation yesterday talking about water problems right from the OT region to the northern belt of the country, northern region, northeast and Savannah. Well, here's a recap of what exactly happened yesterday, right before we hold uh, to account the duty bearers. The worry for these residents about where and when to get water in the coming days would be Herculean. Their lives will evolve around moving from one community to another in search of water. Women and children will have to spend hours in search. Mohammed Hafiz is a Form 2 student of Aswari Dean Junior High School. He's just closed from school but has to begin drawing water so that he can fetch enough. He says he will have to increase the number of times he fetched so that by the time the dam dries up, they will still have some more to use. We have um, in our area, we use it to build uh, our rooms and, and in cases we used to uh, drink and wash our clothes. The pipes are not flowing. A student of the UDS, Suleimana Abdul Jabari, says they have had to rely on this water because they cannot afford the daily two cities for a gallon of water sold by water vendors. And uh, as you can, when you come here around uh, Saturday or Sunday, I, I bet you will cry. When you see as we just we are suffering here. And, uh, some some of the people in the community, they are selling waters for us. They will, get, they will go somewhere and bring the water. One gallon of water is two city. Okay. And imagine you are a student and you are going to use, to spend all your money on this on, on buying water from the natives. So we are, we are really suffering a lot around this area. This the clock traditional area has a population of over 1,000. The area is riddled with several development challenges. They are faced with bad roads, no good health care facilities, no portable water and telecommunication network. These communities are most often cut off from the rest of the world, especially during the rainy season. Even though there are several challenges, the most critical for the people of the Claw traditional area is portable water. So we kickstart the conversation now from the different regions uh, uh, that we spoke about. And we're going to start uh, with Alaji Al Hassan Zakaria Shani, who is Northern Regional Minister. Uh, thank you very much for joining the, the conversation, uh, Alaj Shani. Thank you very much for having me. Great. <clears throat> now, we note that in the northern region, there is an acute water situation in some uh, crucial areas. And I'll be mentioning some of them uh, shortly that we've actually been uh, speaking of. Uh, just to, you know, situate the conversation, uh, we're talking about Dungu near Tamale, where uh, the dam has dried up. We are talking about communities including Asawaba, uh, Dungu Nyohene, Bambaya, Paring, Kunyavilu, Dungu Kukuo, and around the UDS uh, community. Uh, tell me, uh, are you aware of the situation, first of all? Thank you very much for asking. I'm very much aware about this, and a lot has been done in that direction to correct those anomalies. Uh, when you say a lot is being done, can you walk us through what is what exactly is being done? Well, you know, Tamale is is, is a it's a very large area, and all those areas that you are you are recounting are all areas that are new. Uh, there are suburbs of Tamale uh, far from town. Uh, for them to get good pipe water, uh, drinking water, uh, some extension works should be done. And I think very much aware that government is in the, doing something in that direction. Right. Now, it's not just Tamale we are looking at. We know Yendi, Gushegu, Bimbela, all of these places are also facing acute uh, water shortages. So can we broaden the conversation? In the northern region, it's a crisis that we are talking of. And you're saying that you are aware of the situation. And I'm yeah. trying to find out what critical measures have been put in place. So let's focus. The dams, for example, that were created, how many exist in the northern region? The dams that were created, uh, most of them are in good use. Yes, that uh, we have a very dry season this year. The dry season prolonged beyond what normally exists. So some of the dams had to dry up because of the usage of, over usage of those dams. 
Uh, it is this same dam that we use for household chores. Uh, they, they use for this dry season gardening, vegetable farming, and even the uh, animals would also draw from that those dams, putting a lot of pressure on those dams. Mm. And it, it leaves us in uh, the position of losing the dams or the dams being dried up. Uh, Al Alhatani, how many yeah. dams do you know have been created in, in your region uh, that are still being used? How many? Can, can you tell us? Yeah, we have about 200. In, in the, uh, the whole, the whole uh, dam population in the region is about 243 or so, 243. And out of these 243 that were being constructed, we have about 200 completed dams. Most of them are in use, even though some of them are almost dried up because of the prolonged dry season. Let, let by me this now. Time of the, mm. By this time of the year, the rains sh should have started for a bit. Uh, as we all know, it's, it's, it's not raining as at the moment. Okay, I'll come back to you with some other concerns uh, as far as your region is concerned. But let me now uh, engage uh, uh, Mr. E e so that is the OT uh, regional uh, minister. Let, let me, Makubu, yes, uh, Joshua Makubu. So, uh, Honorable, I just want to find out from you. You are aware, I, I, I hope, that in the Krache area of your region, there are acute water problems. In fact, we've seen uh, videos in recent times come through concerning that area and beyond, and it is quite a situation. How much do you know about the situation and uh, what has so far been done about it to get water to the ordinary people? Um, thank you very much. Um, in the OT region, talking about um, water crisis, we, communities such as CB comes to mind, um, the Crouchy West uh, municipality, and then um, part of... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Krachi East Municipality that is actually housing the regional capital. Now, if you look at the case of Sibi, that is in the Nkwanta North District. Um, as of 2008, when um, former President John Ejiku Kufo was leaving office, a robust water system where water was treated from River Oti and pumped through Damanko, Sibi, Jakokra to Pasa was in place. And this was handled by the community. Somewhere along the line, we got the information that the a level of indebtedness and maintenance was a problem. Then uh, they have to bring in a private investor who also came in and doesn't have the capacity and ended up messing up the whole place. And then Ghana Water and Sanitation Agency has taken over. Currently, as we speak, instead of four pumps, Two are the treatment side, and then two are the, uh, what they call the supply side. We have only two pumps that are working. So water could only be supplied up to Damanku, and CB and Pasa are not getting water. But the good news is that, as I speak with you, uh, Aqua Africa uh, is coming in with a facility that will refurbish the, what they call the water system in Nkwanta North, and even expand it beyond Pasa and part of uh, Damanko. But to keep the current situation, I just spoke with the CEO about a week ago, and the agreement was that they will get one pump uh, to be fixed, add one additional pump to be fixed, so that in the short time, water can be pumped out to CB, so that the problem in CB in the meantime can be um, resolved, so that the expansion and then the restructuring work will be done by uh, what they call it, Aqua Africa. The consultant I hear will be in in the next two weeks and very soon they will get into. But what is happening is that this same Aqua Africa facility, which is a, a 30 million euro facility, is going to also consider the water system in the Krachi East municipality, which would definitely uh, capture uh, surroundings like uh, Okuma, Ekra, Waini, and the other surroundings that were played in your, um, your, your distant area. 
in the Krati East Municipal Krati West Municipality, I was there on Wednesday, um, on Saturday to meet the youth groups in town mm. over a complaint that the Community Water and Sanitation Agency had brought to me that they had stopped them from reading meters and other things. We got that issue resolved. And then the other issue was that the people of Krati were saying that, look, they have the lake just by them, and they need surface water now, instead of using boreholes to supply them water, right. which is not, uh, what they call it, uh, reliable. So anything short of uh, surface water, they were not going to accept it. That okay. was making it difficult for the community water and sanitation agency to expand, add additional, uh, what they call it, boreholes to be able to supply water. But the surface water treatment, that is going to be uh, what do you call a medium-term plan. But in the short run, what do we do to make sure that our brothers and sisters in Karachi West get water? Okay, so, so, so in the short term, walk us through that very briefly, what you're going to do in the short term, just very briefly on, so, on that final Yeah, point. what we are doing in the short term is that they have now agreed okay. that community water and sanitation agencies should come in, add another borehole to the existing borehole, with that, they'll be able to supply water to the entire Karachi West Township for the meantime, once we look for an investor who has already expressed interest of um, getting the surface water project done, where he will pray for some number of years okay. and hand over. Right. So that is what we're doing now. I'll be coming back to you uh, shortly, but let me now engage Professor Saad Dito, climate change analyst at the University uh, for Development uh, Studies. Prof, thank you for joining the conversation. Now, we heard al Shani, Shani, uh, the Northern Regional Minister, mentioned a short while ago that uh, irregular rainfall patterns are also contributing to this problem. How much of an effect is this having on the back of climate change in terms of water resources in these areas up north? The audio, turn on. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Um, sorry, my video has problems, so you can't see me. That's fine. Um, but you see, the we are talking about potable water, water for drinking. So by the time we are talking about dams, that are dry, and we are talking about portable water, it means we have a serious crisis. Mm. When you heard Honorable Joshua discussing, you realize that he was talking about how to get portable water, water that is drinkable to people. So when you see all these people going to dams to fetch water for drinking, it means we have a very, very serious problem. Now, for Tamale, about two weeks ago, and for almost for over two weeks, there was hardly any water anywhere in the town. And the reason wasn't because of rain. The reason wasn't because there were no dams. The reason was because, I'm not too sure, but the reason was because Ghana water was not pumping water. So the, almost the whole of Tamale didn't have water. As I said, and the more important thing I think for all of us is that when that happens, there should be information as to why the situation exists from Ghana water. Nobody knew exactly what the problem was. So when we're talking about portable water, we should be talking about portable water. I was expecting that we'll be talking about Ghana water supplying water to parts of the um, Northern region, for that matter, anywhere. Then maybe boreholes, and then definitely treated water. Uh, but, but Prof, we, we also know that in some of these places up north, uh, Ghana Water Company Limited has not even reached them yet, so they have to rely on other sources of water, like the boreholes. Exactly. That's the point we are making. That's mm. the point I'm making. So if Ghana Water hasn't reached there, then the, the key thing is, what do we do with this water, muddy water that they are fetching? Mm. What are we doing about it? We are doing virtually nothing about it. We are just saying that we have built a dam. Go and fetch that dirty water. That go and fetch that infested water and use. That may be very temporary, and you can imagine the kinds of situations, health situations that are actually going. So the truth about the matter is that we have serious problems with portable water. And you see, until our politicians actually agree that we have a problem, 
who can never solve it. We are we are given what there are two hundred something dams. There are these this there. Yet we know that these are serious problems. And you are saying that because of the extent of uh, dry season, the water dried. When for how many years hasn't there been a long uh, dry season that is long? So so so, so, so what what, what is that? Prof, first, what, our first. Um, uh, point to solve the problem mm -hmm. is to agree that it's a serious problem. And then what do we do? And as um, Honorable Joshua was talking about, there are short term solutions, medium term solutions, and long term solutions. What are we doing in the short term? Okay. In the short term, maybe we can say, okay, well, since it is not, we cannot do anything much in the short term, dams may help. But okay. even the dams, what are we doing about it? What are we teaching them? What should they do with the water? I know in the when we were children, we put alum or something in the water so yes. that the, the water and all that. What are we doing? Are we teaching? Are we telling the um, um, villagers or the uh, rural people for how to treat the water mm. so that they may be able to use it? Are we talking about in the medium term, maybe boreholes? Are we talking about in the long term, how Ghana water will solve the problem? So, so, so we must be able to agree that there's a problem, and how do we solve it now in the future? Okay, so it, it's clear I that there is... I'm not hearing that it, on what has happened. Yes, Prof, it is clear that there is a problem. The people don't have potable water, and we need a plan. And that is why we're engaging some of the regional ministers. But just to highlight the real situation, how much of a challenge is exactly, climate... But, but, but the point I'm making is that I'm right. not hearing, I'm not hearing that they agree that there's a problem. Well, I'm not hearing that. When I I'm cross over back that, uh, as I wrap up with. It's because mm. of dry season. And the dry season has been that since I was born. Right. Right. So, uh, as far as you are concerned, you're not seeing any solutions being proffered by Al Haj Shani and Mr. Uh, no, no, Makubu, no, no. basically. I'm saying that I am not even, I'm not even seeing them realizing that there's a problem. Wow. I want them to agree that there's a problem and that it's a serious problem. Then we can start. But I am not hearing them saying that, yes, this is a serious problem, which we must tackle. That's where we should start. Okay, so let, let, let me cross over briefly. I'll come back to you, uh, Prof, and we'll wrap up on the conversation. But uh, let me come briefly to you, al Shani. Shani. Uh, you've heard, Prof, do you agree there is a problem? And what is your commitment? What commitment are you going to make moving forward to get water to your people in the northern region? Uh, Alha Shani, please unmute uh, so we can hear you. Wh whatever it is uh, you're communicating, sharing with us. Alha Shani, yeah, please unmute. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Do I you agree there's I, a problem? I started my, my submission with accepting that there was a problem. Mm. And uh, I do not think that uh, nobody thinks that there's no problem. There's a problem. Because the people of the northern region are, are affected. And if there's no problem, why wouldn't we have why don't we have water flowing through our pipes? So there's a problem. And in solving this problem, uh, in December last year, the president, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, uh, commissioned a water project that was to give water to, the, to Tamale and East environs, and another project in Yendi. All these projects uh, will start very soon. The, what, the one in Tamale would, would be programming, uh, giving the people of, the, of Tamale and East environs 120 million gallons a day. That would be enough for us to do all the expansion works that uh, we want to do to get water to the people of Tamale and uh, a radius of 30 kilometers within Tamale. And in the end, uh, it's also a project that will give us 45 million gallons a day. Mm. That would also serve about 30 kilometers radius within the catchment area. Mm. So all of these things are measures that have been put in place to help uh, the people of the northern region. Apart from that, the community water and sanitation division that is responsible for giving water to the rural areas. It's very effective. Yeah, I, I'm aware that so many dams, uh, boreholes have been uh, dug to help, uh, to help us in this direction. The Ministry of uh, Special Initi Initiatives also embarked on some number of uh, drillings that uh, is, is helping. Now so, that uh, the ministry 
has, has now moved back to the presidency. I'm sure serious work is going to be done okay. to make sure that this, so, so Al this problem is solved. I, I, by, hear you, by, by I hear you saying a lot you. of uh, this project will take place and we shall do, yeah. we shall do, we shall yeah. do. Uh, I want you to make a commitment. Let's say by end of 2021, we're already in the fifth month, so let's give ourselves another six months. What are you committing to by end of 2021 as Northern Regional Minister to get water to your people? What is your commitment, briefly? That, that is what I'm saying. Uh, by the end of 2021, I'm in, I'm in talks with uh, the Wagana Water Company uh, Regional Directorate here. And uh, we, are, we are doing much. I think in the last two days, uh, the water situation in Tamale have improved. Now the water has started flowing into the river. It's not that they are not, they, they, they have the capacity to supply at least 50 to 60 percent of the needs of the people of Tamale. But the issue was that the catchment area that they would draw the water from to treat and pump was not there. Now the rains have started, water has started flowing in. We have an improvement, and every, everybody in the, within the Tamale metropolis can attest to what I'm saying. Water is flowing in. Uh, Everybody is making good use of what is going now. Okay. But notwithstanding that, there's a conscious effort to make sure that this problem is solved and solved once and for all okay. when this water project comes on stream. I'm, a, I'm very much aware that uh, the, we have reached a, a state of value for money audit that will be completed soon. By the okay. end of June, I think this water project in Tamale and Yendi would have also all taken off. Okay, by the end of this June. Is so that, that that, that is an assurance June, there. The water project, yeah, the project would have taken off. All right, by the end of June. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Yes, uh, yes. Let me come to Mr. Makubu. Now, uh, you do realize there's a problem, I'm sure. Now, what is your commitment moving forward? What are you committing to do in the areas that are affected, Krache and Kwanta, among others? What is your commitment before the end of 2021? <laughs> Thank you very much. As I indicated earlier, we are getting an additional pump to the Damanko water site. When? Then the people have to be... When is Hello? this? When is this? So I, when I spoke with the CEO about a week ago, and we're giving ourselves about a month to two to be able to get that. But as I indicated, in the case of Krachi East Municipality, that's the regional capital, the consultant is expected in June to come in and then when he's satisfied with his work, the site will be handed over to the contractor, Aqua Africa, and they will also commence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was in Krachi West last Saturday, uh, and then I'll have to engage the Community Water and Sanitation Agency. We'll get back there and I'll consume a few meetings. They will also add the other ball who and start the water supply while the investor comes in to work on the surface uh, water for uh, distribution. So, so but um, I, I think that the other gender, the climate uh, change analyst, uh, I was expecting that he would have educated us on how these uh, water systems are also be impacted by changes in climate. We, we, we're actually getting to that. The human activity. Mm. But I, I think that is the kind of education you should be offering to us that will also support us as politicians to educate our people as we struggle. You look at this community and you realize that even in uh, one and other areas, we have that boreholes, several of them, but just that the water is not coming. And I think it has to do with climate change and other things. We will need better education from that angle by those people who have acquired those special, special skills. But as for identification of the problem, yes, we accept there's a problem because our people are facing the problem. We are also facing the problem. And when it is resolved, our own brothers and sisters will get portable water. And that is exactly what we are into now. Okay, so I want a yes or no answer for this. In the next few months, yeah. latest by the close of 2021, please hold on, Prof. Uh, in the next few months, latest by the close of 2021, Mr. Makubu, you can guarantee that the people of Krache, uh, the, the people of Nkwanta will have water, potable water to drink. Yes, That's when you are talking about Nkwanta, Karen Nkwanta proper, mm -hmm. there's water that is now flowing through our pipes in Nkwanta. That is where I live. But mm -hmm. the people of CB, before the close of 2021, we are going to make sure that an additional pump is added and they will get water whilst we work to refurbish the other aspect. And Crutchy too is the same thing as I've indicated. All right. Prof, now... 
I want us to touch on, you know, touch base on that very issue raised by uh, Honorable Makubu as we wrap, get ready to wrap the conversation. How much of a problem is climate change right now? Yeah, how I much of an impact? Uh, could you just hold on? How much of an impact do you foresee it will have on our water systems? Dams are drying up and all that. Give us the education, Prof. Yes, um, thank you very much. And I'm happy that um, Honorable Joshua mentioned it. Yes, climate change is a problem. In fact, today, as we are talking, we are going to have a, I mean, why right now, and we are discussing climate change there in the, in the next um, few minutes. Um, say it is a serious problem. But the point he made was that we should be educating or at least um, giving people information. Mm -hmm. Communication is extremely important. You, let's take a very simple example. When they started the one dam, one something, uh, uh, one village, one dam, ask the ministry that how many of the experts in Ghana, and there were quite many, did they consult? None. The politicians don't even use the university people for anything. The university are places of knowledge, of practical things we are doing, but nobody bothers to even ask the university. Hello, Prof. Uh, do, we, do we still have uh, Professor Saadito? All right, so uh, some education that uh, Professor Sadito was giving, but unfortunately, it appears the connection with him has been lost. Uh, but any final words, uh, Mr. Makubu and uh, Alhaj Shani, right before we wrap? Any final words? I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Makubu. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. um, my, my internet got cut off, sorry. Okay. So the point I'm actually making is that... It's oh, it's... It's a very important point. These mm. is the university, these universities are funded by government put a lot of money in there. There's a lot of knowledge there. But the knowledge is not used. So the dams that were built in Tamale at the University for Development Studies, there is a project where World Bank and the Ghana government is funding. It is, it is sent, we are a West African center for water irrigation and sustainable agriculture. Right. Yet nobody, no, not, not a single politician has even bought it to find out what are these people doing. Okay, and that must change, okay. So we have a serious problem with communication between knowledge institutions mm. and the politicians. Okay, uh, Prof. So Sanito. how do we, how do we um, interact, not even educate? It's more of a direction, because there are a lot of things you know, and there are a lot of things we don't know. But the Prof, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for actually joining us. Unfortunately, uh, I cannot take the little last bits from uh, Honorable uh, uh, Sani and uh, Honorable Makubu. But thank you very much for joining the uh, conversation at this morning. It continues as we try to get water to uh, those in the northern belt of Aka.